Could a tiny island with almost no natural freshwater really become a global model for water security and beat a looming water crisis Singapore's water story reads like a thriller, a nation that once feared running out of water has, in a few decades, turned scarcity into strategy and vulnerability into exportable know-how. The secret wasn't a single miracle, but a relentless, integrated plan that treated water as a national asset, not an afterthought. The country built reservoirs in the city, invented and scaled ultra-clean recycled water, salted seawater became drinking water through advanced desalination, huge underground sewer tunnels turned waste into resource, and tight demand management kept per capita use in check. All of these moves were anchored by long-term state planning, heavy investment in research and engineering, and a public that accepted and adopted change. In this video, we'll unpack the exact elements that let Singapore beat a looming water crisis by 2025, the infrastructure, the technology, the policies, the people, and the diplomacy, so you can see how one tiny island rewired its future and what the rest of the world can learn. The Four National Taps A simple idea that changed everything. Singapore's foundation for resilience is its Four National Taps approach. Capturing rain in reservoirs, importing water, recycling used water into ultra-clean new water, and desalinating seawater. By treating these four sources as complementary taps, rather than relying on any single one, Singapore spread risk and created redundancy, meaning a dry year, diplomatic uncertainty, or a technical outage no longer threatened the whole system. This mindset also changed investments. Instead of hoping for more natural supply, the country deliberately built the capacity to generate its own water using technology and smart land planning, giving policymakers the confidence to phase down risky dependencies. That strategic framing diversity, redundancy and deliberate scaling is the core reason Singapore moved from chronic anxiety about water to secure operations. New Water making reuse mainstream and trusted. New Water began as a technical program, but became a social one. Singapore invested not only in ultrafiltration, reverse osmosis and ultraviolet disinfection, but in demonstrations, visitor centers, transparent testing and education, so people accepted recycled water. Over the years, New Water went from being used mainly by industry and cooling systems to being integrated into the potable supply during dry spells, a shift enabled by relentless testing and clear communication about safety. The engineering alone would not have sufficed. The public messaging that normalized the idea of drinking purified reclaimed water removed the yuck barrier and turned a technical capability into a usable national tap. That social license, coupled with expanding reclamation plants, allowed Singapore to rely on reuse as a major pillar of supply. Deep tunnel sewerage system and Tuas water reclamation plant, scale and efficiency, Singapore tackled the used water problem at scale with the deep tunnel sewerage system, a backbone of tunnels that funnels wastewater efficiently to central reclamation hubs, Phase 2 of the DTSS and the huge Tuas water reclamation plant are designed to process enormous volumes with compact modern membrane bioreactors. Centralizing treatment in this way produced economies of scale, reduced land footprint, and allowed advanced technologies to be applied consistently, producing more new water with less energy per cubic meter. The DTSS made every drop of used water easier to collect, treat and recycle, turning urban plumbing into a national advantage rather than an obstacle. Desalination, seawater as a reliable national tap. When rainfall and imports are uncertain, the ocean is abundant, but only if you can afford the energy and membranes to desalinate at scale. Singapore invested in multiple desalination plants including dual-mode facilities that can run on brackish or seawater and operate in energy-efficient modes. By spreading desalination capacity across several plants and investing in efficiency improvements and alternative energy options, Singapore insulated itself from interruptions at any single plant and steadily increased the share of desalinated water in its portfolio. This made seawater a dependable tap rather than an emergency fix. Catchment expansion and smart storage, harvesting the rain that falls. 
Despite being wet by regional standards, Singapore's challenge was land for catchment and storage. The government tackled this through creative urban planning, turning city damplands into catchment areas, building reservoirs like the Marina Barrage in the heart of the city, and optimizing stormwater capture across the island. By integrating drainage, parks and reservoirs, the nation captured more of the rainfall it already gets and used green infrastructure to reduce runoff and pollution. Those changes increased effective supply without needing more rain, a classic use-what-you-already-have move that tightened the loop from cloud to tap. Demand management, pricing and regulation, buying time with behavior. Infrastructure alone would not be enough. Controlling demand mattered. Singapore used tiered water pricing, rigorous leak detection and appliance standards to keep per capita consumption lower than it otherwise would be. Public education campaigns framed water conservation as civic duty, while building codes and industrial incentives promoted water-efficient technologies. Together, these measures reduced growth in demand, giving engineers time to build supply options and reducing the marginal cost of securing the next drop. In short, smarter demand buys time and reduces the scale of supply solutions required. Research, innovation and local industry inventing better, cheaper tech. Singapore's water resilience grew from continuous R&D and partnerships between pub, universities and private firms. The country pushed membrane research, energy recovery and industrial synergies so that recycling and desalination got steadily more efficient. It also incubated water technology firms and exports, turning domestic necessity into an industry which created incentives to keep improving performance and lowering costs. By investing in homegrown innovation, Singapore avoided depending solely on off-the-shelf solutions and kept a steady tempo of capability upgrades. Public engagement and education, turning citizens into co-managers, technical fixes needed social acceptance to work at scale. Singapore ran visibility programs, school curricula and public tours for years the Nuwata Visitor Centre played a role, so citizens saw the science and trusted the process. Civic campaigns made conservation a daily habit and reframed water as a shared national resource, not an infinite utility. That deep public buy-in reduced political friction for tough choices like price increases or major investments, and it turned ordinary people into partners rather than obstacles. Regional diplomacy and import risk management. Hedging the foreign tap. Singapore never left its imported water agreements to chance, but it also treated those imports as one piece of a larger mosaic. By massively expanding domestic taps, new water, desalination and catchment, the country reduced strategic vulnerability from external suppliers. Diplomacy remained important, but Singapore's goal was to be able to withstand contract changes or supply disruptions without national crisis. Robust domestic capacity turned imports into a bonus rather than a single critical lifeline. Energy, circularity and the Tuas Nexus, closing the loop. Water security and energy are intertwined, so Singapore focused on making water processes less energy-intensive and more circular. The Tuas Nexus concept, integrating water reclamation with waste management and energy recovery, exemplifies this, co-digesting sludge and food waste to produce biogas, using waste heat and exporting surplus electricity to the grid. By closing the water energy waste loop, Singapore lowered operational costs, cut emissions and made water production more resilient to fuel price shocks. That systems thinking turned a large bill item, energy for desalination and treatment, into an opportunity for efficiency gains and resilience. Singapore didn't beat water scarcity with a single invention. It rewired policy, engineering and society to treat water as a strategic national resource. The lesson is clear and portable. Diversify sources, design for scale and integration, invest in technology and people, and manage demand. By 2025 Singapore had built multiple, redundant taps, world-class treatment hubs, smarter storage, and a citizenry that understood the stakes. That combination turned a looming crisis into a long-term advantage, and the island now exports not only water technologies but a tested model for resilience, 
If you found this breakdown useful, like the video, subscribe for more deep dives, and tell us in the comments which of Singapore's moves surprised you most, the science, the planning, or the social engineering.